Welcome one and welcome all, baby, to a sentimental channel. Orchids <laughs> for dummies. Thank you so much for staying tuned. Now, in this video, I have some dendrobiums, uncidians, catlias, okay? Um, bandas and a Pathia Petalum that I would like to share with you guys. This is more so an update video. As you know, Phalaenopsis orchids are my absolutely favorite. So I don't oftentimes get to share my other orchids with you. So this dendrobium right here is an angel love vivid. It's a kiki. Okay, it's a kick it from it. This little nub right here is that same kiki that I mounted over a year ago, almost two years ago. I will leave a video link above, but um, it grew this cane afterwards. Still has not bloomed for me at all, but it is now pushing up new growth after being dormant for about six months. So I'm really excited about that. It has a lot of happy sap on it, so I'm really hoping that flowers will accompany this beautiful dendrobium very soon. Now, you already know this baby needs no introduction at all. No introduction is needed. This is my glorious, my glorious dendrobium. Okay, Panama Red is her name. And she is such a faithful bloomer. Bloomer, Literally, I got her last year, 2020, for my birthday in February. It's now February 2021, and this baby has been in bloom the entire time that I have had her. Now, I will leave a video link showing you her when she was outdoors in bloom. This baby right here has a new cane. So by the time those flowers fall, this cane will be a old enough and mature enough to produce a beautiful flower spike. Yes, yes, yes. This is the name. Dendrobium Panama Red. Mm -hmm. I got this from a local Lowe's garden center. So a lot of times you will be able to find beautiful orchids, you know, unique orchids at your local garden centers. So I would recommend trying that before you go out and purchase it online where it would be a lot more expensive. Thank you so much for staying tuned. Thank you, thank you. Please like this video. Now, in the last segment, I was telling you about my dendrobium that I had mounted. This is the first successful dendrobium that I have mounted. This is also a kiki from that dendrobium angel love vivid two new growths right here okay the roots have just now started to attach to the bark so it's a very happy camper now as far as how i fertilize it i'm not fertilizing it heavy mama okay we're trying to get it acclimated to the bark so soon i will fertilize it but right now i just wanted to you know acclimate to this bark before i start messing with it this is a dendrobium that I purchased um, last year, last summer from Lowe's, okay? If I'm able to find a picture, I would definitely leave it up here, okay? But if, I'm, if you don't see a picture, I don't have one. I don't have a name for this dendrobium as well. It's still potted in its original planter, okay? I need to repot it. Yes, I do. But for right now, it's doing okay. This right here is the new growth. And as you can see, very beautiful, very green. Okay. And this right here is a um, dendrobium tobanese, which is a different type of dendrobium. Okay. You have your dendrobium phalaenopsis, which we call denfales. You also have your dendrobium tobanese. Okay and your dendrobium nobly. So this is the name, Dendrobium Tobanese Gigantrum by Sib. Okay, and I've had this baby over a year as well. And um, she is actually in flower or in bud. So please stay tuned to a future video so I can show you that beautiful, beautiful bloom. Beautiful, beautiful. No new canes, okay? It's time for her to be repotted as well. Okay, a lot of orchid work to do. A lot of repotting coming up. So you gotta stay tuned. Welcome on back, baby, to a no judgment zone. Orchids for dummies. 
I'm sharing with you all of the orchids in my collection that you don't normally get a chance to see. Starting with my dendrobiums. Please make sure to like this video. Now this <laughs> dendrobium right here is the Angel Love Vivid. This is the Kiki Maker right here. Unfortunately, those weeds got into the pot. I did not repot her. What you see, all of that is weeds. I did not repot her. The weeds actually took all of the nutrients from the dendrobium. Now she is still salvageable. It's just depending upon do I deem it, you know, worth the effort, if you will. So um, the whole pot, everything is just falling, falling apart. So what I will actually hope to be able to do is just get the kikis off, whatever is still viable, uh, just plant it in another pot. Okay, that would definitely be a video that you guys will have to stay tuned to. But it's a lot of, you know, rot as well. Okay, that right there, a lot of rot as well. You see it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But out with the old, in with the new. <laughs> oh, oh, orchids for dummies. Orchids for dummies. Yes, we gotta take care of that soon. Let me just get it out of the way. Get it out of the way for now because this big mama jama is a big mama jama. It's a big mama jama. It's actually two different types of dendrobiums that um, that are potted inside of this wooden basket. Okay, so let's look at the names. We have a dendrobium airy peach. Okay, love the name. Love the name. And we also have a dendrobium golden green. Love it, love it, love it. I was able to find these at Lowe's as well. You know, you gotta know when to look for these different types of orchids at your local market. That's a whole different video. Stay tuned. Come on back. Thank you so much for staying tuned. Make sure to like this video. So up next, I'm going to share with you my beautiful Uncidium orchids. Okay, I have quite a few different type of Uncidium orchids. I have the ones with the small pseudobulbs that's potted into a um, clay pot, which is very, you know, I would not recommend it at all. I would not recommend it because, you know, Uncidiums like to stay moist. They like to stay wet. Can you hear the crunch, crunch, munch, munch? It's been so cold here in Alabama, I have not been able to water it in the past few days, but I mean, it's new growth everywhere. I mean, everywhere. We do have some leaves with the discoloration, which makes me feel as if it's a magnesium deficiency. But I spoke to a dear foul pal, Heath, from Trees Epiphytes, and he is always such a big help growing different type of orchids. You really should check out his channel. I will leave a video link at the end of this video. He has a new channel, but very informative, very knowledgeable when it comes to growing orchids, okay? You don't have to be someone that went to school for agriculture to be able to teach the kids about orchids. Now, I also have the orchid with the big pseudobulb and the one that is a little flat. It has new growth coming up right here. So it's okay. It's still potted in its original planter. I got this from Lowe's as well. Okay, I'm looking forward to repotting it. Yes, I am. And I'm really hoping for a, a bloom. New growth right here as well. So a happy camper. Stay tuned. Welcome on back. Thank you, thank you, thank you for staying tuned. Make sure to like this video. Share it with a friend so you can see the different varieties of orchids that you can grow indoors. If I can do it, you can too. You too can grow. So this beautiful Uncidium right here is actually my first Uncidium that I purchased um, from the Alabama Orchid Society when I met Rick L. Now, the first year of me growing my Uncidium, all I saw was this brown rot, and I would not be able to get a pseudobulb to grow and plump up for me. Now, after I um, spoke to Heath from Trees Epiphytes, he told me to soak my Uncidium for three hours. Ever since I've started soaking my Uncidiums for extended periods of time, I have seen substantial growth, okay? Substantial growth to the point where she is now starting to get um, sunburn all over because, um, because she is growing so light 
I mean, she's growing so close to the light to where I actually have to readjust my whole growing setup just to accommodate her, okay? But no flower spikes. No flower spikes at all, but very, very healthy Uncidium that I've had for two years. Now, this Uncidium I purchased last year as well. I went on an Uncidium spray because I really wanted to practice with my Uncidiums before I started to give my care videos. Now, if you did not know this about Orchids for Dummies, I normally wait six months to a year before I actually start doing care tips on, um, on new Orchids, okay? I want to make sure that my information is correct. Now, this Uncidium is still potted in its original container, and um, she is just grown way out of the pot. I mean, girl, no one wants to deal with that. But she's very healthy and she's very happy. All of this back here has been grown in my care, okay? In this original pot, okay? The Lazy Gardener, I'm trying to tell you. Stay tuned so you can see my beautiful, beautiful cat layers. Welcome on back. Thank you so much for staying tuned. Out of all of the orchids that I'm showing today, which is a variety of the basic orchids that new growers should have, let me know which one of these were your first orchids orchid and which one is your favorite orchid of them all this is actually my only cat layer left i had another cat layer for two years and it died from black rot i did not save it i thought that it was just not worth the effort because at the time this baby had just had it had its first successful rebloom for me this is my um cat layer that orchid diva picked out for me at the redlands orchid Festival. It's been almost two years now that I've had her. As far as what the name is, I don't, I'm not able to understand the tag. So if you're able to understand this tag, please leave it in the comment box below the name of this plant. Now, up next, I'm going to show my Vandas. Stay tuned. Welcome on back, darling. Welcome on back. Please like this video, share it with a friend, okay? Let me know in the comment box. How many Vandas do you own? Do you have success growing your Vandas at home or do you find it a lot easier growing them outdoors? Now, I do have more Vandas, but you would see them in different setups. As like I said, I have orchids that I practice on for over a year before I actually give you the advice that I give you because this is the channel where the proof is going to be in the pudding. I'm always going to be able to show you a video that I've done the experiment to back up exactly what I am teaching you guys. So this baby right here is my only Vanda in water culture. She came to me with a lot of dead roots. I was able to find her on clearance at Lowe's at the end of summer um, the end of summer clearance sale. And um, she has grown some um, beautiful roots for me. Yes, she has. Okay, and she is still growing. Okay, we just got to worry about fertilizing her and keeping that white mold down. Now, she has this white mold because she's sitting inside. She's sitting down in the water. If she was more elevated, I would have less chances of getting white mold. But because trying to find her in an adequate or putting her in an adequate vase, okay, that will be able to be wide and long enough, it's very difficult. So if you know anywhere I can get some nice vases that I will be able to stabilize my orchid in, let me know. Now, this baby right here is in a pot that I made. So, it's potted vandas versus my vandas in water culture. And both are doing really well, okay? This one has quite a few more roots, okay? As it's getting a lot more fertilizer than that one over there. No blooms, no spikes, any of that. I've only had them about six months now. So, when they bloom, you will be the first to know. If you ring that bell, so you will be notified. Stay tuned. I'm sorry, dude. I forgot to show you the name tags. Okay, this says sky blue. Okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this one, it might be the same one. Yes, it's a sky blue as well. 
I told you I buy the same orchid so I would be able to see what exactly I'm doing different with them so I can make whatever adjustments that needs to be made. Stay tuned. Welcome on back, baby. Welcome on back. Like I said, like this video, share it with a friend, okay? Now, these are my other two bandas I've had a little longer. This was um, my first banda that was a success growing, you know, that I potted into a wooden basket. She's been in this basket for over a year now. I was growing her outdoors, and just like that dendrobium, the weeds got into the pot. You know, when you see that algae, honey, that algae is the first sign that weeds are going to accumulate in your pot and take away the nutrients that your orchid it needs so you need to do a repot as soon as those weeds and the algae starts to build up don't be like me so this baby right here has been like this for about two to three weeks um she was losing these bottom leaves sporadically it was a cry for help I actually thought she was dead. Um, I did not do any slicing or dicing or adding herbs and spices. I just took her away from the light and I stopped watering her. Once I saw that the um, leaves stopped dropping, I watered her or soaked her um, one good time. Now, I'm waiting for you guys, someone that might be a little bit more experienced than me, to tell me should I just cut it, cut this off because she's still attached in the pot. Should I just cut it off and try to plant the area roots? I mean, let me know what you would do in this type of scenario, okay? Each one teach one, each one teach one. But she has a lot of beautiful blooms. This is my beautiful vanda with those red blooms, okay? And um, she has rebloomed for me twice, twice. Now, this beautiful baby right here is one of those miniature vandas, also one of those species type of vandas, and it's going to be one of those um, loose neries. A lot of foul pals have this baby right here. It has a different type of bloom. It's also very fragrant, smells like baby powder, and... Um, this is also the first orchid to give me a double spike. Not only a double spike, which was last year, but she produced four spikes for me at the same time, which was really, really incredible. So now she's been growing roots and leaves, you know, taking it slow. And um, I saw some new growth down here. I don't know. I don't think it's a spike. It could be a kiki. Let me know. What do you think that is growing between the leaves? of my miniature vanda. I still have two more vandas to show you, so please. Welcome on back. Thank you so much for staying tuned. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring the bell so you will be notified. Now this right here is what we call an encyclia, or I'm sorry, a brassavola. And this is a yellow bird, brassavola nodosa. It was given to me by Fail Pal Brian. I named it, um, Jesus after my son in orchids and it's been growing really well he sent it to me mounted but you know with mounted orchids you have to water them all day every day and mama just was not going to be able to do that so um, I did pot her in a clay pot which was not the best decision as I found these type of orchids likes to be wet okay and not crunch crunch much much um, a lot of new growth everywhere. Her growing has never been the issue. Um, this right here that you see on the leaves is cold damage from her being on the windowsill. The problem that I have is that she would, you know, get ready to bloom and it would get right here and then it would just blast. That is the second time that has happened to me. Um, since she has been in my care. So any care tips on how to make this baby rebloom, please let me know. Let me know, Brian. And this is my Pathiopetalum that I've had two years, honey. I've named it Jan after Rick L's wife. Now, some people said that she is a goner. Some people, you can hear the crunch, crunch, munch, munch. I'm not able to water this thing enough. So I'm going to try one more tip and trick, you know, to keep her hydrated before I give up on her. My Uncidium that I showed you in the last segment was really similar to this. But sometimes if you just hang on in there and don't give up, those orchids will eventually bloom for you. But understand, we're talking years, 
We're talking years, at least a year, okay? So I have one more orchid. With Welcome on back. Last and least is this baby right here. I brought her because she resembles a house plant so much. And because she was able to be grown in cooler temperatures. This is a Sibidium orchid. This is another orchid that is good for beginners because it loves water. And you know, if it loves water, it's not gonna do good in my care. Um, I don't water it a lot. Um, it's, I don't even want it anymore. It's um, big and it's just, I don't want it anymore. So, you know, if anybody wants a Sibidium that's, you know, not in the best of health, because anytime I move it, she gets upset and these leaves, they die back anytime um, she goes dry. She does this anytime, anything, honey. She's a very sensitive plant, which is one of the reasons why I, do, I no longer care for her. Plus I can fit two or three orchids in the place that she takes up. Well, Fab Pels, I hope that you enjoy me showing you all of my other orchids that I grow indoors. Like I said, let me know which is your favorite orchid. Let me know which one um, was the first orchid that you ever purchased or was given. And please make sure to stay tuned. Have a happy growing. Until next time.